My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us Hi, know where you're tuning us from. My name is Dana, and I'm from Windsor, Ontario. And it's a pleasure to be here, so thank you for having me. How do individuals, let's dive into it. How do individuals get into personal development? What do you think needs to happen for them to get that spark where they need to go learn? Have you ever heard of Kensho versus Satori moments? And if you haven't, technically a Kensho moment is where you develop learning through pain and growth. Because when we go through something that, that you know, affects us in a certain way, we take action to kind of change what's going on or you know, things of momentum kind of bring those same things back around and around again until you take action, right? So I really feel it's from, technically from pain, like you grow from pain and that's a Kensho moment. So how do people get started? Let's say I want to learn about who I am, what do I do? Or I feel like a lot of times individuals, when they get into the business, they pay more attention to self-development. So where, where can I start? Where you can start, I mean, there's definitely a lot of books. There's a lot of self-knowledge and education online, even your own platform, which is amazing because you yourself doing these live videos, you select individuals that already developed a curriculum for people to tap into their self-development. So, I mean, just being a part of your Instagram is a great way to start, actually, because you can see different avenues of people and, you know, where they've been learning. Um, I'm actually developed me my own platform which will probably be a launch event sometime at the end of this year but if you're looking for like books specifically or online I would feel like you, if you want to start out with anything about law of attraction or Abraham Hicks um like you're one of your favorite one that you post about all the time Napoleon Hill those are great ways to start developing your own knowledge about yourself and your feelings and why you're feeling the way you are and where that's going to lead you to your life right Alongside of that, do you think reading and studying is enough or should we get a, a guide, a, a person that helps us coach, maybe a mentor? Definitely mentor is going to be helpful. But if you're not there yet, you don't feel comfortable, you can dabble in. Like I read so many different books and then those books led me to want leaders and to have that mentor and to take it to the next level. So I really do think it's where your comfortability zone is, but you definitely want to head that direction because they're taking somebody else's advice that they learned over five or 10 years and they can talk to you in a few hours or you take a class with them. You, you learn, you, you gain that self-knowledge from them and it builds you a higher rank, right? So I, I agree that. with that hundred percent. So here's my question for you individually. What is your routine as far as what it goes with the, uh, with self-development? Is it a daily process? Is it more audible? Is it more YouTube? Is it more mentoring? Is it more coaching? How do you do it? Or maybe you can share with us some of your routines that has worked for you. It's a little bit with everything. So I believe like where I kind of started out was physically getting fit and mentally getting fit. And how I started with that was I looked a lot into meditation. And so I daily practice that at least 20 to 40 minutes in the morning. Now I know that sounds like a lot to somebody, but I gained to get up to that you maybe start with five ten minutes in the morning right and really what you're trying to do there's two different types of meditation there's visualization meditation and there's like quieting of the mind right and i feel like when your life's really chaotic and hectic and you're not sure what's going on you can really benefit from quieting the mind and focusing on your breath and as soon as your mind starts to travel into an area where oh you recognize it and you come back and breathe again you focus on your breath. And if you do that five, 10 minutes a day in the morning and at night, I mean, that let alone will will shift things for you. And if you can start going for walks or if you don't have an exercise routine, really, I feel like mentally, you have to be mentally fit and physically fit for yourself to develop to the next level as well. So that's where I would start out with is definitely meditating. I'm going to throw a curveball at you. Okay. So let's just say, financially i'm not where i want to be mm -hmm. and i'm stressed financially do you think individually at that kind of state of mind to do meditation okay right in that state of mind no you're not going to be able to right away just shut off your mind like that absolutely not um so when you're stressed 
that is like an internal compass. I all feel like we have an inner being and they speak to us through our emotions. So if you're feeling stressed and you're feeling like you can't or there's all these problems, that's your inner being disagreeing with how you're looking at the situation and where it knows your true soul purpose is to go. It knows that. So if you can kind of just be aware that you're feeling that emotion um, and then start to think of things that you can feel appreciation for, like maybe that you have a house over your head or that you have water to drink or that you have food to eat. I know those are simple things, but those are going to neutralize where your kind of mind is at, where you're uh, worried about things. And then at that point, you can maybe go forward with starting to meditate once you get yourself into a neutral generalization of appreciation, right? And then that moment of worrying about your finances and what you don't have. And I feel like at that moment, you're not really appreciating the things that you do have. So that's a good start. That's cool. So as part of your goals, when you meditate, should you be talking about, should you be thinking about your financial goals? Because I feel like a lot of individuals, we talk about it, positive mental attitude, all of that stuff. And even with Napoleon Hill thinking grow rich, one of the key elements that I think he recognized back in the days was that you need to have financial goal. You need to have a monetary compensation goal. Because if you're not making money, it makes a lot of things harder. Not that that is the only thing. It just makes a lot of things harder. So to me, it's like, what do I do with that? If I have some financial goals, then what do I do? So if you have financial goals, you got to be crystal clear about what you want. And at the same time, if thinking about what you want is bringing you into a negative place, maybe you're not ready yet to set the goals financially. Maybe you need to take a step back and get yourself again to a clearer state of mind where you, you can feel positive about the future in yourself. Because when you're sitting there and picturing what you want and you feel negative about it, you're only reattracting that same type of momentum you already have in existence you already have about it, the lack there of there of it, right? So if you can notice that when you're doing that, if you're feeling that way, that to take a step back, and go back to the original process of just trying to feel neutral and grateful. And then when you are in a good mood, maybe, you, maybe you're with your children, maybe you're with your wife, maybe you're with your petting your favorite animals, and you feel love, that is the moment to visualize those key success you want for yourself because you're building the momentum of positivity. So it depends where you are on the positive spectrum for where you want to go. The more positive you're feeling, the more detailed you can be about your future goals and visions and when you're more on that other side of the spectrum you should take it back to generalization and kind of just be thankful for the things that you're that you have you know i agree with that i mean because a lot of times i feel like a lot of people confuse the law of attraction with lack of action i feel like you know it needs to definitely be there at the same time maybe i'm not explaining it right but that's what it needs to be you can't just be sitting around doing nothing thinking positive things are going to happen to you. You know, maybe, yeah, positive things are happening. You're still breathing. You're still alive. You're still there. You know, that that part must, must be happening. But at the same time, for business owners and entrepreneurs, I think that's very important for them to financially hit their goals. Listen, the number one leading cause of divorce is financial. The number one lead of, 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 of bankruptcy is finances. So I feel like, we're not emphasizing that, and I've seen a lot of coaches, they don't want to talk about the money as much, but I'm the opposite. I'm like, listen, I don't care if you feel negative or positive. You still need to perform in your business and make money because if you're not making money, if you're in a negative state of mind, it's just going to go more negative. Agreed, because certainty, certainty is what generates momentum. And then from that momentum, you're going to take, you're going to take uh, action. Right. And from that action, you're going to get results. But if you start in the original spot, if you don't have that certainty or belief about it, then you're going to take probably not as well good action and you're going to get less there of results. So it's really important to be 100 percent believing in yourself. And sometimes it's really hard to do. And like, how do I go about that? Right. How do how do I believe in myself when nobody else around me is going to believe in me? 
because it's up to you and yourself inside to believe in you. So you got to really work on your focus of belief and, and, and what, what you want to set out to do. And if you don't feel like you can, you, then you won't because you won't take action. It's like inspired action, right? And so a lot of people can misconstrue law of attraction that way, as well as there's a law of resonance. And a law of resonance is like, who do you want to be? right so don't think of yourself of who you are now how you get to like who is it you want to become is it the, is that the leader you want to be a ceo of some business you gotta picture yourself like that and what would that person do and start living your life in that direction and that's what's going to re really make the magic happen i agree with that 100 percent. so here's my question when you change did you transition from a nine to five job to entrepreneurship or you never held a job I'm actually in the process of doing that right now. So I've been at my last job for 10 years and I'm in the transition of moving from that nine to five to creating my own online platform business. So, so tell me the two scariest moments or two scary feelings that happen when individuals want to do that transition. You fear, you feel like you're going to fail. So you're like, do, do I just stay content? I have a job. Do I, I know I'm not passionate, so do I just stay here? And the fear of failure is going to keep you where you are. So I think the anticipation of the failure or the anticipation of the fear is even worse than the fear itself. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's the feeling before the fear. Right, right. I, I agree with that. So, like, you're, you're terrified of what could happen, right? So sometimes you just need to trust in yourself and have that certainty and have that confidence and, and know why you're feeling the way that you are and kind of take action from that way forward. So I'm actually in the midst of that right now. So it's a really interesting question that you asked me that. How would you feel when you quit or when you leave that position? How would That's you feel? Actually, one of the visualization meditations I do is I picture myself in that moment and how I do feel. And I feel great. Like, I honestly feel like a weight's been lifted off my shoulders and that I, my, my soul has guided me into the right direction. That's how I picture that happening. So. And I want to emphasize that for the audiences. That is not a negative thing. That doesn't mean your boss is a bad person. Nope. He's this or that or what you've done. You didn't like it. You may not be passionate about it. That's okay, but you did it. For an extended period of time, you must have liked it or else you wouldn't have not shown you know, up. It gave me a source of income. It gave me a living. I met so many people. I'm grateful for the situation. And being there so long made me hunger, made me hungry for more, made me know that I can give more. And the, 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 the glass ceiling, so to speak, of where I'm at in my job, I can't excel anymore. There's got to be more to that. And I'm hungry for it. And that's what started me on this journey to develop this is a new way of life for me, right? To not just be in that so who put life. this crazy thought in your in your mind that you could do this stuff what happened just being i was sick of sick of feeling not good about myself like i wasn't enough there's like there's got to be a way to change this so like literally just googling like i don't want to feel this way anymore right and then certain things came up and abraham hicks was like number one so i just started listening to that on a daily basis and it really opened up my eyes and I'm like, okay, I'm buying all the books, bought all the books, read all the books. Then anybody that she would mention, I was like, oh, I got to grab that book. I got to grab that book. And then it led me to Mind Valley, which I don't know if you've ever heard of Mind Valley. It's like a platform education. Of course. Yeah. Vision, the CEO Vision. signed my, signed my thinking Grodich book. As a matter of fact, I'll show it to you. Please. So this is, uh, I have two of these. It looks like the Bible. Yes. Uh, and I have Vision's autograph right there. Amazing. Amazing. I did an interview with him in Los Angeles when he was here. He's a cool dude. I like him. He's all right. We're, we might be in a little bit of a competition on our platforms, but it's all right. He's got a head start on me. I like him. He's cool. You know, it's it's no problem. Mind Valley is cool. I tag him all the time. He's, uh, he's a cool dude. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, that's what it is. But it's not even... It's not even about an individual or a single platform because, I mean, think about it. Napoleon Hill wrote this stuff about 100 years ago. So my question is this, and this is a very fascinating question for all the coaches, is if Napoleon Hill went and interviewed 500 successful people, 1,000, 2,000, whatever the number is, it's, it's irrelevant. He, a bunch of people he interviewed. Question is, 
where did those individuals get their knowledge base to know about the principles? Because he went to them and they were in possession of those principles. And then he studied them, acquired them, and he put it in a book. The question is, how did they get it? And if they got it, that means the principles existed before Napoleon Hill had that conversations with them because they were in possession and they were in application of it. They just didn't know about it. It wasn't just that they knew about the information. They were applying the principles. Therefore, that should tell you that Napoleon Hill and those individuals got their knowledge base to apply from secret texts that you could call it, right? So the question would be, what the hell were there? How did they get them? So was it the Bible? Was it any other holy book? Was it Quran? What, what was it? How did they get it? And if it wasn't the holy books that were given to us by prophets, whatever you want to believe in, then it was given by somebody else. Okay, who was that somebody else? I want to know the, 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 the guy who knew about these principles 200 years ago. I want to find that guy. How did he knew? You see what I'm saying? So this is, as a, as a scientist, as a researcher, as someone who analyzes things, you always want to get to the source. Napoleon Hill made it easy to get to these knowledge, right? But what if there were other things that contributes to your success? Here's the problem. A lot of times when you ask a successful person how you did it, they're like, well, I just did it. It's very short. They don't know why they're successful. If they have to analyze it, they've done multiple things that comes in accumulation. Uh, if you ask Vishen, why was, how are you successful? He'll give you a, a, a mumbo jumbo, right? A, an answer. But if you want to take that process and take it and give it to somebody else, then that somebody else will not be successful as much as vision. So there is gap, there is missing. So what is that missing? Is because most successful people, they somehow, some way, they come into the possession of the principles, they do it, but when we want to codify it and explain how they did it, which is exactly what they do scientists, right? The only time that they can prove a theory is if they can duplicate it over and over in the lab and they get the same results or then it won't be a theory, it won't be proven, right? Scientifically, you have to be able to go from this lab to another lab and replicate the process and get the same outcome, or it doesn't count, right? Well, that doesn't work in success principles because they tell you what they did, and then you copy it, and then you don't get the same results. Because if that was the case, let's just I'm just giving you some statistics so you get from it. Let's just say on a conservative number, 120 million copies of Thinking Grow Rich were sold. Let's just say that number is bullshit number. We could settle with 100 million. Cool. That's one third of the entire United States, right? So that just gives you a share amount of volume that it was. How come we don't have 100 million millionaires and plus? So you could have two people, right? They have the exact same income, knowledge, where they live, access to people around them. It's the tour. It's the the story they tell themselves the story they tell themselves that's the difference between the individual because one has i always believe that we have a villain in us and a hero in us in our in our inner subconscious mind right and depending on these two individuals they both have the book they both have the knowledge but one the the villain speaking louder than the hero and the other the hero speaking louder than the villain that inner voice and story right so what is your story and where did you come from and are you going to let that story hold you back from all these things that you can accomplish in your future is that the story you want to tell or are you going to tell us a different story and that makes the difference between those two individuals i really do think so you're putting the responsibility on the individual not the yeah. principles well it's the principles are always going to be there but it is up to that individual to to utilize the principles and, and and feel right about them and, and believe in themselves, right? Because without that, then the principles are just there. They're not really being used. So let me ask you a question. You know, when my wife got pregnant, you can't be pregnant 90%. You can't be pregnant 95%. You either are pregnant or you're not pregnant. 
what if there were some principles that were not in the book and you got to the 99% but that 1% is missing what if that it's just a, it's just a thought it's just a thought I'm, it's just a question right i'm questioning you i'm like so we're saying that napoleon hill and and i'm using napoleon hill as an author and you can use anybody else that you want right i'm saying so if this is we're putting our soul entire future dependency on success on this one individual what if they would have not, what if they missed something what if they didn't get all of it in there right what if napoleon hill had another extra 10 15 years to live what if napoleon hill would have interviewed another 300 people would have still been in the same thing so that's the key element that we're questioning over here and that's what it is and to me it's like the fascinating question is how did the individuals at that time become successful if there was no thinking grow rich book available that's the fascinating part because then we need to study those individuals and either they had high iq low iq or they were just i don't know miracles happened or it was an inheritance or by accident i don't know that's the question so i think when you get into self development you got to ask profound questions because if you don't ask profound questions that drive for you to go do the research may not be there that's all i'm saying i agree i agree make a very valid point there yeah because i mean what if the guy got it wrong and there was a couple of not that he got it wrong what if there was a couple of things that he didn't mention what about that which i know based on my research there are a couple of things that okay. is not mentioned in the book that i think is important right i mean think about it 1925 law of success does not include the mastermind principle but the 1928 law of success includes mastermind group so 1925 if anybody would have got that law of success would have not known as much as they needed to know about the mastermind process that we know that right now right so that's crazy three years difference one brand new principle which is the key element that's why the 1928 law of success starts with the mastermind group as the first chapter it was that important that he put it but 3 years before he didn't think it was that important or maybe he was working on it. i don't know anyway changing subject how do people find you um right now i have my platform on my instagram so that's dbom87 so d b o m b 87 and eventually you'll be able to get information on when i'm going to release my event so if you want to just follow me and that would be amazing and i really appreciate you doing this live chat with me today Thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule and being with us. Hopefully we'll do more. Let us know when the platform is live so we can send a shout out to you. For sure, absolutely. You got to keep reading those self development books. Absolutely. Thank you so Talk much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.